Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rawls with a news item that I thought you might be interested in. Um, the topic is glyphosate. So what's glyphosate? Glyphosate is an herbicide. It kills weeds. It's Roundup. It's the stuff that you commonly put on your yards. But it's also very, very heavily used in agriculture. Uh, the company that makes it is Monsanto. They were bought out by the drug company Bayer, so now it's Bayer Monsanto, and it's heavily used in agriculture. Um, most farmers use it. It's especially heavily used in soybeans, corn, and other grains. And this is what GMO foods are all about, genetically engineered foods. So what they're doing is they're genetically engineering the crop to be resistant to Roundup, so you can use specifically Roundup on that crop to kill the weeds. Um, the idea is that you might be able to use a little bit less of it, but once you use GMO seeds that are specific for Roundup, you're pretty much stuck buying Roundup from Monsanto, and that's the whole idea. Now, recent, this is, I've been following this topic for a long time, but this is a recent article that was posted on the, the front page of the website of in the Environmental Working Group. Environmental Working Group is a really wonderful nonprofit that uh, looks out for uh, consumer advocacy and rights. And, and so what they're doing is um, basically looking at problems and calling out problems and warning consumers of things that they might be interested in. So this one was about glyphosate. So the Environmental Working Group did independent testing or they sponsored testing and they found glyphosate in higher than accepted levels in 21 foods, oat-based products that were commonly marketed to children. Um, that's a big deal. If you go to the website, it's actually posted on the website so you can look at the foods, but I'm telling you, it's not just these foods, it's everywhere. Virtually every product that you're getting out there has glyphosate in it. Now, even some organic things are getting traced because it's so heavily used in the industry, it crosses, it's in everywhere, and everybody's dumping it on their yards. Um, so it's getting in the environment. It is truly wrecking the environment. This stuff is a real hazard. So what are the concerns? Well, in 2015, the World Health Organization, WHO, found it to be a probable carcinogen. Um, and this is after years of research suggesting that it was, and I've been following this research all along. In 2017, the California Office of Health and Hazard deemed it a definite carcinogen. So after that time, there have been some court cases. Um, since, uh, since last August in California, there have been three cases that were settled against Monsanto, a bear, or Bear Monsanto, for a total of $2.2 billion. And the claim was that glyphosate causes cancer and that Bear Monsanto knew about the risk and went to great lengths to, to cover it up. And this article published by the Environmental Working Group even claims that uh, Monsanto Bear knew about the risk and colluded with the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, to classify it as safe. That's a big deal. Um, so this is a very concerning substance and it's really out there. So how does it cause harm? It disrupts messaging systems in the body. Um, so it's affecting, you know, a lot of herbicides and pesticides are disrupting co communication systems in, in insects or, or other plants, and that's how they work. Uh, so if you can design a plant that's specific, that it doesn't harm this thing, then it, it affects the, 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 the targeted uh, insect, herb, or, or, or uh, uh, plant, weed, whatever you're trying to get rid of. Um, but when we take it in our bodies, it disrupts our signaling agents. So our body is a collection of cells, and for our cells to be healthy, we have to have systems that take care of ourselves. Gastrointestinal system, lungs, 
uh, everything. Uh, it's a, it's a all-for-one and one-for-all kinds of situation. So for cells to work in the body, they have to communicate. So that's what hormones, neurotransmitters, nervous system is all about communication between cells so our body can function as a unit. So all these toxins disrupt communications in the body. And when you disrupt communications, that's when everything starts to break down and illness sets in. Uh, illness is basically sick cells. So if, if cells aren't getting the nutrients, oxygen, all the things that they need because the systems in the body aren't working, you get sick. Um, so, so when you take in, pull in toxins that are disrupting those, those messaging systems, you can count on being ill and it leading to some bad problems, even cancer. But even you know, before you even talk about cancer, it's disrupting a lot of things in the body. So what do you do about it? Well, top of the list of, is trying to avoid GMO foods. But again, you're still going to be getting in a lot of other things. So second to that, eat organic um, and preferably vegetables. Uh, you're going to get higher, lower concentrations of it in, in organic vegetables than anywhere else. Um, so it's mainly going to be concentrated in the highly processed grain products. Um, you're also going to find it in meat though, uh, because these things are heavily used in the corn and also the soybean industry f for feeding animals. Uh, so if you're getting a lot of these foods that are, that are being used to feed animals, you, you know, it's going to concentrate up the food chain and it's going to, if these things are fat soluble, it's going to be concentrated in the fats of the animals. So if you're a high meat eater and a high grain consumer, plan on having plenty of glyphosate in your system and your kids too. So cutting back on those processed grain products, eating more vegetables, avoiding GMO, eating organic is really important. One other thing you can do, take herbs. Herbs are really important, and herbs have the contrary effect. So we've got all these things in our, that, that come at us that disrupt our hormone systems, uh, what I call system disruptors. So a lot of what, what our herbs are doing is our plants have very similar chemicals to ours, so they have the effect because our system is so much more attuned to recognizing these chemicals they have a balancing effect. So it counteracts, it cuts out some of the disturbance that's being caused by these other chemical messengers. So when you take herbs, you're automatically counteracting those things. Another thing that we found that herbs do, which is really important, is they boost detoxification of these chemicals. They help you get them out of your body faster. And they have a direct effect on of protecting your cells, which is really important. So which herbs to take? Really most any of them are good. Um, they're all going to have some effect, but top of the list, chlorella is really good for binding organic toxins and removing them from the body. Uh, so chlorella is a freshwater algae, really good one to have. Other herbs, adaptogens. Adaptogens are immune modulators and hormone balancers. So there are a lot of great adaptogens, ones that we put in our products, reishi, cordyceps, rhodiola. Um, there's so many really nice adaptogens that have the effect of, of counteracting the negative effects of some of these harmful chemicals that, that come into our bodies. Um, and then there are a lot of things that help clear the lymphatics and uh, you know, we're, uh, we're, I'm working right now on a detox product for, uh, for bringing herbs that you can use acutely to really knock these things down there as quickly as you can. Um, but there is a bigger prob problem. A lot of weeds are becoming resistant to Roundup now. So Monsanto is out there building new chemicals and new GMOs, uh, and so a lot of new things are coming on the market that are just as harmful, if not worse, than Roundup. Um, so, so don't just put all your attention on the Roundup. There are other things out there that are just as bad, and you've got, you've got to make your stance. You've got to, to, you, you've got to give an opinion. So one thing that you can do is make your voice known. 
there is a petition that's being circulated by environmental working group go to their website sign the petition be part of this movement be proactive you also uh, you vote with your dollar don't buy processed grain products don't buy GMO products buy organic buy better foods uh, spend, work on things that are going to have less total harm to the, to the environment and your family, which is really, really important. So those are the, some things that you can do actively that can make a difference. And when enough people get together and talk about these issues, then we start to have change. We start to have recognition. So this is a problem that we can deal with, um, but everybody has to be active. So if you, uh, if you think this information is valuable, please take the time to share it with others. Um, go to the Environmental Working Group website. It's a great website for finding out a lot of wonderful information, everything from sunscreens to foods. Uh, and, and it's a good way to protect yourself and your family. Have a good day.